powered by artificial intelligence, cars are beginning to divorce their drivers and move independently. In recent years, more and more self-driving cars are hitting the roads in China. On the sidelines of the Second World Intelligence Congress, held in China's northern city of Tianjin, a self-driving race has just concluded, with 90 teams from home and abroad competing their AI systems. The competition focuses on mapping, positioning, decision-making and security control on different kinds of roads. After the fierce competition, I got a chance to take a ride on one of the racing cars developed by Chinese automaker Jiangling to see how good Chinese self-driving technology really is. We're in the suburbs of Tianjin and there aren't that many other cars on the roads. We've come across two and so far it handled that very well. Most importantly, it isn't making any sharp turns. There's a radar sensor on the front and now that sensor is very important because if anything should jump in front of the car it will detect it and stop and then you've got the big sensor on the front which is also monitoring other conditions. I think one of the biggest advantages of this car is you can just sit here, you can play on your phone, you can send an email, you can talk to your work colleagues on the way to work. It's very efficient. It's almost like having your own personal driver. I have to be honest, it's, it's quite a responsible driver. Su Ji She, a young AI engineer from a startup company which collaborates with automaker Jiangling, told me why the car moves so steadily. The intense competition is an example of China's enthusiasm towards self-driving technology. Over the past several years, Chinese tech giants like Baidu and Didi, as well as automakers and universities, have been constantly innovating in this sector. I think uh, it's very safe to say that China is clearly one of the world's leaders in connecting autonomous vehicles and one of the driving forces behind its development. I think it's probably to do with critical mass. The fact that uh, China has uh, a large population, um, it means that innovation can be commercialized a lot, lot quicker. Um, so it's by, simply by numbers alone, but also by having a very um, progressive um, uh, and proactive attitude towards connected autonomous vehicles coming from central government down it has helped sort of stimulate and push, and, and pu and push the innovation forward. A driverless world does seem quite attractive. In David's vision, our kids and grandkids may never need to learn how to drive. This technology could single-handedly eliminate speeding and drunk driving. Meanwhile, a smarter transportation system would also improve efficiency and stimulate economic growth. However, there are still many concerns and skepticism over the innovation being made in this field. Are we ready for a driverless society? What challenges would it pose? Scott McCormick, president of Connected Vehicle Trade Association in the US, shares his concerns. In transportation planning, China is basically the only place that's building a lot of new roads. And so they have the ability to take that into account. The rest of the world, we've had our roads for 50 years and are adding very few of them. So we're looking at a condition of how do we retrofit the highway infrastructure to accommodate you know, these changes. For more than a century, there has always been a clear-cut relationship between automobiles and drivers. Now with AI being a game-changer, autonomous cars will forever change that status quo, taking us into the future.